I agree with you completely. When my parents first came in 1990 from Mexico, they faced many of those challenges. Simply not knowing the language was one of the most difficult challenges they, they faced. Access to resources, where to find a job, how to move around, transportation. Um, I mean, my father told me that he used to live under a bridge in California. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, they've been able to overcome these challenges, and now they're doing, they're doing relatively well, and they've been able to give me and my siblings an opportunity at achieving the American dream. So that's what's driven them to get up every day at 5 in the morning to, to, to give us that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I've been grateful for it, and I've been uh, pushing to, to, set, to make it worth it that they were able to um, endure those struggles. Mm -hmm. Historically, immigration has played an important role in the U.S. society ever since the Europeans immigrated here during the immigration wave in the 1890s. Mm -hmm. One relatively new um, U.S. immigration policy has been DACA, which was implemented in August of 2012 by President Barack Obama's executive action. It's been a very, very uh, beneficial program for many who, who used to be undocumented immigrants, but now they get DACA, which stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival. This program has allowed many undocumented immigrants who entered before the age of 16 to receive a two-year work permit and deferment from deportation. So I have some data here that I'd like to look at. It says here that USCIS has, has tallied a total of 741,000 beneficiaries of DACA mm -hmm. over the last four years. Other data that I have here by the National Immigration Law Center tells us that DACA recipients are contributing significantly to our economy by buying cars, their first homes, which translates into more revenue for the state and the local municipalities in the forms of sales and property taxes. Mm -hmm. Of course, other DACA beneficiaries are contributing by creating their own businesses, creating new jobs, which ends up benefiting American society as a whole. I agree with those facts too. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Now, Cynthia, would you be able to share with us your immigrant story? Yes, for my story. I'm also a bit of a from DACA. I got DACA in 2012. You know, it's really wonderful that you're sharing this data from DACA. You know, I can see a big picture of um, all the people that I know from my community or from different communities that I have engaged throughout my years. You know, as a community organizer, just helping families. I can see the faces that represent that data right there that have been, you know, beneficiaries from DACA. For my story, you know, let's back up to 2001 when I immigrated here with my parents and my siblings. My dad was previous here in New York. He immigrated by himself just to kind of check out what is the dream you know of about basically a Mexican from here to America and he thought you know bringing his whole family would be beneficial for education for economy and it's just overall to have a better life so when I came here and I was five years old I came here not knowing neither English or even reading in Spanish which is my primary language so coming in here was you know pretty cool you know it was a new world for me and, you know, for some people might say, oh, wow, it's, you know, like the American dream, you're going to live it. But for me, it was a little, you know, shaky with our family because, like you said, yourself, but you're, you came here with nothing. You know, my parents came here with, from scratch. They had to look for jobs. And especially my mom during that time, she recently gave birth to my sister who she was born here. She's a U.S. citizen. And she had three kids overall. I'm um, going into school, you know, getting to know the new system. I know in English, so they had to put me into a whole Spanish classes. Let's, you know, move forward to my middle school. It was a little shaky. I didn't know English. It was just more of a Spanish language. So my sixth grade was actually my first English class that I had a professor. And it was tough because the teacher, you know, at that time, they didn't like no one to speak Spanish. So it was a little tough to, like, learn English and be on top of it or else I would get a bad grade or sometimes I'll get yelled at. And so my eighth grade, um, I don't know, in a lot of some schools they give like scholarships for when you go to high school or you graduate college, you get the, like $500, $100. I noticed that one day, you know, my whole class got a scholarship, even those who never really tried hard in school. I was always wondering, how come they got a scholarship and I didn't get anything? So I thought it was just all about grades. I never really questioned that until my high school year when it came to, you know, your high school year is like getting to know friends, getting to know yourself, and then also getting ready for college, which is a big, huge thing for many of us. My junior year, um, 
you're waiting on the early process to start getting applying for college and, you know, getting FAFSA, getting all these scholarships. For me, it was a tough time because during application, they ask you for one thing, which is social security, you know, to get FAFSA, to get scholarships. And unfortunately for me, I always had to leave it blank. You know, for me, it was just nothing. I'm just going to leave it blank. I'm going to get accepted. I get grades. I have a good GPA. But then the letters came from the colleges asking me, hey, we need to get your social security number. For me, a social security number, I just thought it was just a number. And I was like, maybe I was not lucky enough to get a social security number. So then I went home and I told my mom, you know, I need my social security number for college. Um, I need it. And... That's when my mom kind of like looked at me and said, you don't have one. And then I was like, you know, when you're in a Latino family, you don't really question your parents a lot. So I was like, okay, so if I don't have one, what am I supposed to do now? And that's when my mom was like, well, you know, try to talk to your teachers and just let them know. But that was just the question. Just let them know that I, I don't have a social security. What can I do? So then it came to the point where like, all my classmates were applying, they were getting into schools, and I'm still here waiting with a bunch of letters requesting me for my social security. Moving forward, one time one of the schools kind of like let us slide and said, hey, come into a one-on-one -on -one interview, and then hopefully you'll get to know more information as to if you get accepted, if you have any scholarships. So I told my mom, you could come with me. It'll be a great time. You'll wait for me. You'll interact with them. It'll be a great time for both of us. So this was my dream school. We went on that interview, and, you know, I sat there with my mom. My mom knows a little bit of English, and she understands it perfectly. And we were sitting there, and, you know, I answered the questions. The interview went amazing. Then the admissions officer came outside and was like, hey, we need to tell you some great news. And I was like, okay, great news. That's awesome. So you've been accepted to our school, and you got a married scholarship, and other scholarships up to the top of that that are private, and you're eligible for it. But the thing is that we need your social security number to claim the scholarships. And there we go again with the same question. My mom saw it this time, and then I thought my mom didn't understand. I was like, well, you know, I don't have one at the moment. I'm fixing it. I'm trying to look it around because I think I lost it. So then I guess the admissions officers kind of knew that I was not true. They were like, well, whenever you find it or if you're able to get a new one, just come back to us and they will talk. You know, I had to leave my mom, you know, just empty hands, you know, not even leaving anything with like, hey, I'm coming back to college. This is going to be my college. And we even did a tour. So we left. And then during our walk, you know, it was really quiet. And my mom was like, well, you had to be stronger now. And that's when I was like, I turned around my mom. I was like, Why? She was like, well, this is one of your first barriers. You know, you don't have a social security number, and they're going to continue to ask that probably for the rest of your life, hopefully not. And I was like, how come? She was like, because you were not born here, and you remember when we came here? And I'm like, yeah, a little bit I remember. It's like, well, you know, people who are not born here, they're not eligible to go to college. And then I looked at her, and I'm like, how come? You know, just questioning. And that's when she told me, well, you know, all I have to tell you as a mom, you have to be stronger because from now on, you're going to face a lot of barriers. And that's where I found out. That's quite a journey story. I mean, I can't imagine the, the difficulty in facing that challenge. Basically, you went through your whole life in the American system, being a good student, setting these goals that you want to achieve once you get to the college level. You get the good grades, you're involved in all these leadership activities, working, working hard in school. And then you get to this point where it's like you're, you're in the door, but you're out the door. Was this in 2011? Yes, it was in 2011. This was the year before DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, was implemented. Mm -hmm. um, do you recall if there had been talk about DACA? Or when did you f first start hearing about? When our family never knew about what DACA was. We started knowing that until like the end of December when we started seeing a lot of news all around like NBC, ABC. You know, it's a lot of different channels where they were talking about a young folks going to Washington, D.C. and fighting for DACA, which was able to help them with education, which was something that I could relate with them. That's how I heard about it.